Hi, this is Scott Kilo Sierra 6 Delta Alpha Yankee, and for today's video, I wanted to do a real quick one um, regarding some things that you might want to watch for if you've done the most recent firmware update. Uh, in particular for me, what it turned out to be was the transmit power on the memory channels that I had programmed into the radio. Now, how I discovered this was when I, uh, following the firmware update, fired up the radio, and I had noticed um, what I was actually checking was uh, some GMRS repeaters first and I was trying to hit those repeaters. I was successful actually with a couple of repeaters so I didn't see that there was a problem. It was hitting the repeaters uh, although I didn't pass any message traffic because no one was no one was around at the time but um, later when I switched over to the amateur radio repeaters those are a little harder to hit in my particular neck of the woods and I was noticing repeaters that I was able to hit with this radio before I was now not able to hit with uh, with my radio after the firmware update, and I thought, well, damn it, did this? Is there another problem that got created by the firmware update? So I'm kind of scratching my head a little bit now because I keep my radios in a certain condition across the board uh, as a standard practice. I didn't notice what was a very simple solution to the problem. Instead, I immediately think it's something a little more complicated, and I start searching around for answers to questions that have not been asked. Um, and I've had that happen to me before, and at least I'm far enough along in the game where I go, hang on, if no one else is having a problem, it's probably me. And sure enough, I, I come back and I look at the radio and I take a little closer look, and here's what I discovered. Um, looking at the display, the first thing that really, when I, I start paying attention to what was going on, was I noticed the L right there. Well, that tells me my, my this particular memory slot for this repeater is set to low power output. Well, that would explain why I'm not hitting the repeater. And uh, it was actually this particular repeater channel uh, was the first one that I started messing with. So I went in, adjusted the power setting to high, and I was able to hit the repeater. But as I started going through uh, the rest of the repeaters, I noticed that all of these, and again, I, by default, program my radio so that everything, if it's possible, it is on high output at all times. I can then turn down. But if I grab a radio, I grab it knowing that it's already set on high. Unless I change something, it's always going to be on high output. But scrolling through here, if you'll notice, just keep looking at that L right there because it's never going to change. Each repeater we go through, set on low output. Every single one. And then when we go down into simplex land, again, everything in here is set, well, that one I actually ended up changing um, a little bit earlier, right before I did this video, but everything is set to low, every single one, all the way through. So it appears that the firmware update, one of the things that it does, and I don't know why, but one of the things that it does is when you update the radio, it didn't, the only thing it really changed was that, but I am going to go ahead and put this on the on my CPS and go in and look very closely at everything, because if it's going to change that, I want to make sure there's nothing else that it changed. But if you're finding that your radio has diminished performance after your firmware update, chances are it's something really as simple as check your power output setting. But uh, furthermore, you may want to go ahead and put it on your CPS, whether it's uh, Chirp or OD Master or whatever you use. Put it on there and go in and, and check and make sure that everything's okay and that none of the other critical settings have been changed. So I thought I'd do a real quick one and let you know that, that advisement right there. Um, and if you, want to, if you want to cut from the content at this point, you can, but I'm going to mention one other thing uh, right now. Another thing that I'm having some reports on in the comment section is I've had a couple of people report that after the firmware update that their radio is not turning on again. Now, <clears throat> in from what I can gather, if you if your firmware update is interrupted at any point, what it'll do is it just shuts the radio down. It, it's not going to work. Um, it's not bricked in that it's not dead, but it's not going to function until um, proper firmware has been put on there. So it doesn't, it's in the process of overriding the firmware. And if you, there's an interruption, the firmware gets half overwritten, things don't compute, radio is not going to work. So when you're doing a firmware update, and, and this relates to whether it's this or whether it's a, another electronic device, it's very important that whatever firmware update that you're doing, you very closely follow the instructions provided by the manufacturer. 
Now, there is a README document that comes with the package that you download from TID Radio. I actually think it's walkietalkies.com. And I put the link in the description for the video on the firmware update. But that README document is very, very important. And there's also an actual piece of software in that package that provides you with a program to install the firmware update on the radio. But there are some people that are installing the update via Chirp. Um, and that they're doing it, uh, they're actually pulling the .bin file down from like a Facebook user group. They're not getting the rest of the parts of that package. And I don't know if that's what might be causing it. Um, and it's something that I didn't really, uh, didn't really think would occur until I, I looked into how are these guys getting their, getting the BIN file in the first place and, and what are they doing and how are they installing it. So within the readme document for the firmware installation process, there's, um, there's a very important note in there that when you're installing the firmware, uh, you, so this is how I did it. Um, you use the software there, you follow the instructions, you load the software, uh, you load the update file onto that software, and then and only then, it's like step six before you even turn the radio on. And when you do turn the radio on, there's a direction to hold the PTT down and turn the radio on. They don't stress, I don't think, um, that you should hold that PTT down the entire time. I, although I think it is actually is in there. But it's important that as you are installing that firmware, that you keep that PTT pressed all the way down the entire time. So you press the PTT, you turn the radio on, and then it does its thing. Then you get the indication that download is successful. Then you can go ahead and release and uh, unplug and and then you can check, make sure everything worked okay. If your radio goes dark on you um, and the radio is not turning on, you can repeat the process. So if you if you're having this problem and it's still tripping you up, maybe you're you're using Chirp or or, or some other uh, method to install the firmware firmware update. Might I suggest that you go to that link in the description that I gave you for the firmware update, download the entire package to include the software. Look at the README document, read it very carefully, follow each step precisely, and then try again on your radio to install that firmware. It has worked for others that they've done that and then the radio then works. That's the only advice that I can give you. Beyond that, I suggest you contact TID Radio. There's a lot of people that have successfully installed the firmware, uh, myself included, but I do understand sometimes people get tripped up by things, or there may be a problem with the radio too. If there is, I'd like to know that. So if that relates to you, by all means, go into the comment section, let us know the problem that you're having. There may be other people in there that might be able to help you. That's the extent of the advice that I can give to you. So with that, I'll go ahead and wrap it up. Thank you for watching and or listening. This is Scott Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee from Visalia, California. Have a wonderful day.